by far one of the most common questions I get is in regards to pregnancy symptoms and what to do about them. And as somebody who just got through a very difficult pregnancy, I got lots and lots and lots of tips for you. So the first one is the big one, nausea. People call it morning sickness, but from a lot of people that experience this, it's more like all day sickness. I had it for the first 12 months of my daughter's pregnancy and it was all consuming. It was hard to work. I couldn't exercise. All I could do was eat sourdough toast. I gained a ton of weight in the first trimester because all I could eat was bread. But I know this is like nothing compared to a lot of women who have HG and, you know, are constantly vomiting, can't keep any food down, have to go to the hospital. So I, I can't even imagine what that must be like for you if you're going through that. All right, so a lot of medical professionals associate nausea and vomiting during pregnancy um, with the, the pregnancy hormone, HCG. And they're, they believe that it might, they might, um, it might actually be a sign that, that the fetus is developing healthily. So that's some good news. Um, but if you're not experiencing nausea, it certainly does not mean that your baby is not healthy. You know, with my son, I didn't have any nausea. He was perfectly healthy. So again, you, you don't be sad if you don't have nausea. Um, and you, you might experience morning sickness, you know, early on in the pregnancy due to, you know, the increase in HCG hormones in your body or even low blood sugar. And you might also make morning sickness worse if you're really, really tired, which it is easy to do in pregnancy if you're experiencing emotional stress or if you are pregnant with multiples that can make that that nausea more common and you know morning sickness or just pregnancy nausea it, it can feel like like a sick stomach like kind of like car sickness um acid reflux or it can actually cause you to to vomit Again, usually for a lot of women, it tends to ease up at the end of, of the first trimester, um, but there are still ways to make yourself more comfortable during that first trimester or if it continues on, which I hope it doesn't for you, um, this, is, this is what you can do. So eat little bits at a time frequently throughout the day and you want to eat lots of protein. You know, something that happens is once you feel nauseous, you don't want to eat, but then that empty stomach will make the, the nausea worse. So really try to force yourself to have small protein rich snacks throughout the day um, instead of like really big meals. You know, a couple of good options would be, you know, apple slices with almond butter, a, a handful of like pumpkin seeds. Um, and ideally you want to eat just a little bit every two hours or so to, to stave off the, the nausea. And you can also ask your care provider about taking um, a vitamin B6 supplement and some other things that can help eating those saltine crackers. They're the classic, right? Uh, drinking lots and lots of water, especially if you're vomiting. You want to, to replace replace the, the fluid loss. Um, and if you are vomiting, we also want to replace your electrolytes. So ask, ask your care provider how they want you to do that. Like something like coconut water has a lot of electrolytes. Ginger tablets. This is the only thing that helped me like significantly when I was experiencing nausea is ginger tablets. And there's a link link below to the ones that I used. They were a miracle worker. Um, you can also do like a smoothie with fresh ginger and greens. That also helps you get, you know, those nutrients that might be hard to come by when you're vomiting or just not wanting to eat, especially like salads. Um, chamomile or peppermint tea can be really soothing on the stomach. Smelling um, peppermint essential oils. Peppermint can be really great for, for nausea. And eat what sounds good to you. You know, it's like... If the only, like for me, sourdough toast and maybe occasionally some eggs is like all that I wanted to eat and just letting myself eat that instead of eating nothing at all was, is fine. So 
Don't try to stick to some strict diet unless your doctor is telling you to when you're feeling really nauseous. Just let, your, let yourself eat the things that actually sound good. And that might be a very, very short list. And that's okay. Um, take a nap because again, being overly tired can increase the nausea and get some fresh air. That fresh air can really help to alleviate that. All right, so the next one is fatigue. That's one that hits almost all of us. I have never met a pregnant woman <laughs> that didn't say that she was super tired during at least one part of her pregnancy. All right, so what causes the fatigue? This is largely due to hormonal changes, specifically a rise in progesterone. Um, and you're most likely to feel a lot of fatigue in the first trimester. Just like nausea, a lot of times that starts to, to ease up after that first trimester. If possible, take lots of naps. Obviously, that helps to, to beat fatigue. Try to get at least eight hours of sleep every night if you can. Um, you know, and it, this, this might become more challenging later in the pregnancy as you start to become just like physically uncomfortable. See, so you want to do everything you can. Pregnancy pillow, you know, having a sleep sanctuary, comfortable pajamas, keeping your room fairly cool, good bedding. I could go on and on. Um, you can also actually drink chamomile before bed. And like I said, use a pregnancy pillow. I have a link below. If you're podcasting, check out the show notes. I have a link to all of my favorite products for, for fighting these uncomfortable pregnancy symptoms. All right, next up is heartburn. It's like, you know, that, that burning feeling in your chest. It feels like you're breathing in fire. That's heartburn. What's to blame? Like many pregnancy symptoms, hormones, because they just relax everything in your body. You know, your joints, your ligaments, your muscles, your organs. And right now, what's causing that heartburn is your hormones relaxing the, the valve between your esophagus and your stomach. And so essentially what this does is it allows some stomach acid to leak up into your esophagus and you're, you know, you're rising, expanding uterus. It can place pressure on your stomach, forcing acid into the esophagus, making it worse. And when you're not pregnant, you know, heartburn typically happens after eating, when you're laying down, when you bend over. And when you do become pregnant, heartburn can happen at any time. Yay. Okay. So what to do about heartburn? Um, you start to eat smaller meals more frequently. Again, just like the nausea, shoot for six small meals during the day instead of three big ones. Have a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. Um, I provided a link to my, my favorite brand of apple cider vinegar. You want to avoid citrusy foods like oranges. Avoid spicy foods like, like wasabi, chili peppers. Avoid fried foods, anything breaded, cooked in a lot of oil. Um, don't lie down immediately after eating. You want to allow at least 60 minutes for your food to di digest before you get horizontal. And so for additional relief, um, you might also consider asking your doctor or your midwife about trying papaya enzymes, over-the-counter medications that are safe to take during pregnancy, um, and notice when you get heartburn and avoid those foods. I can hear my baby crying, so I am going to do the next phase of this podcast episode slash video um, in another part. Stay tuned. Please like and subscribe. It's super helpful. Bye.